Hi, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF, your ham radio sensei. Onegaishimasu. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Zoom Spot hotspot and use it with your D-Star, Yesu System Fusion, or DMR radio. In this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how to use your D-Star, Yesu System Fusion, or DMR radio, and it's only the hotspot that you need to set up. If you need help setting up your radio for digital use, there are lots of YouTube videos around which will help you do this, or you can call or visit your nearest ham radio outlet store and we'll be happy to help. The instructions I'm about to give you are for the ZoomSpot Elite 3.5, but you can follow the exact same steps and use the exact same image file as shown in this video, even if you have the older ZoomSpot Nextion model like me. There are other optional steps that you can make to further configure your hotspot, but I'm not going to get into those in this video. So let's get straight into setting up the hotspot. Hi, Julian from the future here. The SD card in the zoom spot you purchased from HRO already contains an image that will work perfectly out of the box, so there's no need to do the process I'm about to explain. However, if at some later date you need to recreate the SD card image, you can follow the directions I'm about to describe. If you're going to download and burn this image, I'd recommend you burn it to a different SD card so that you always have the original SD card available as a backup. In fact, I recommend you always back up the original SD card, even if you're not going to update the image file. Now, back to the video. The first thing we need to do is download a couple of utilities. Let's download Win32 Disk Imager so we can prepare our SD card for the zoom spot. Follow the link in the video description. We're going to save the installation file in our downloads folder. It's a very small program, so it won't take long to download. There it is, done. Let's install it by double clicking on the file we just downloaded. Follow the prompts as you would when installing any other program. Uncheck the last two checkboxes as we don't want to run the program just yet. The next thing we're going to download is 7-zip. This is optional, but it makes using compressed zip files much easier. Follow the link to the 7-zip download in the video description. Download the 64-bit Windows version. Once it is downloaded, double-click on it to install. Now we can close the Downloads folder. Next, we're going to open our web browser and go to the Ham Radio Outlet website, hamradio.com. In the search bar at the top of the home page, type in Zoom Spot and press Enter. Click on the Zoom Spot Elite picture, scroll down the page, almost to the bottom, and click on the link to download the Zoom Spot Elite Image Kit. Save it in the Downloads folder. It's 800 megabytes, so it may take a while to download. Go to your Downloads folder and double-click on the Zoom 3.5 Elite file that you just downloaded. 7-Zip should open. Click once on the Zoom 3.5 Elite image and then click the Extract button. This will decompress the image into your Downloads folder. It will take a minute or so to decompress, and when it's done, close 7-Zip. To make things easier, I'm going to click on the View tab at the top of my Downloads folder and enable the File Name Extension option. Now we need to insert the SD card into our SD card reader on the computer. It's possible that Windows will say the SD card needs to be formatted before use. Click Cancel. We're going to overwrite everything on the card anyway. Run Win32 Disk Imager and click on the folder icon. Select the zoom 3.5 elite.img file we just extracted earlier and make sure the correct SD card is selected in the device list. Click the right button and double check that you're overwriting the correct SD card. Click yes and Win32 Disk Imager will write the image to the SD card. Note that it's going to take a long time to complete.
Okay, 18 minutes later and we're done with the preliminaries. Close Win32 Disk Imager and let's eject the SD card. Right click on the SD card and select Eject. It's finally time to put the SD card in the zoom spot. Make sure the zoom spot's antenna is connected and then connect everything else and power on the zoom spot. Our computer is currently connected to our home Wi-Fi or our wired network connection. Although we've installed the software on the zoom spot, we've not yet configured it. To access the zoom spot in this unconfigured state, the zoom spot will create its own Wi-Fi network and we will have to connect our computer to it. If we look at the Wi-Fi signals present on our computer, we'll see that the usual Wi-Fi routers and printers are there. If we wait about three minutes from the time we first turned on the zoom spot and check the Wi-Fi signals again, we'll see a new Wi-Fi signal, Pi Star. Mine is actually called Pi Star 2 because it's the second one I've set up. Click on the Pi Star network and then click Connect. On most systems, the web browser will open automatically, but if it doesn't, Start your web browser and type in http colon forward slash forward slash pi hyphen star forward slash and click enter. Eventually you'll see the zoom spot dashboard and then the configuration window. It's now time to configure the Pi Star software. Scroll down to the very bottom of the configuration page to the wireless configuration section. Click on configure Wi-Fi and then scan for networks. In the list of Wi-Fi networks that pops up, select your home network and enter in your home network's password. Finally, click Save and Connect. We need to reboot the zoom spot to make it connect to our home network. Scroll to the very top of the page and click the power link. Click the green reboot button. It takes a while for the zoom spot to reboot, so while that's happening, let's connect our computer back to our home Wi-Fi network again. Once this is done, we can continue setting up the zoom spot because both our computer and the zoom spot are now on the same network. Let's go back to our browser and go to http colon forward slash forward slash pi hyphen star forward slash. You'll see the dashboard and then you'll have to sign into the zoom spot. The default username is pi hyphen star and the password is raspberry, both in lowercase. We'll change that later. After logging in, you'll see the configuration page again. Scroll down to the General Configuration section. Put in your call sign next to Mode Call Sign. Change the radio frequency to something appropriate for your area. For me, 438.160.000. Note the punctuation are periods, not commas. Type in your latitude and longitude in decimal format. Two digits after the decimal point gives you some ambiguity. Three digits pretty much locates your house. Type in the name of your town and your grid square. Enter your country, for me, USA. If you have a website that you want people to know about, you can enter it here. If you want people to see your QRZ page, select Auto, and we'll have more on this later. Choose an APRS server. Rotate.aprs2.net works fine. Select the system time zone and the dashboard language as appropriate and then click apply changes. It'll take a moment to reboot. After the reboot, we're back on the configuration page again. Scroll to the very bottom of the page. We're gonna change the default password from Raspberry to something of our own choosing. In the remote access section, enter a new password. Type it again to confirm it, and do not forget this password. 
Click Set Password and you'll have to log in again with the username pi-star and your new password. That's all the general configuration steps complete. Well, that wasn't too bad, right? Now it's time to set up the digital mode that we want to use. We'll start with DSTAR. In the configuration page, under MMDVM host configuration, move the slider next to DSTAR mode to on, it'll turn red. Click apply changes in the zoom spot will reboot and put you back in the configuration page. Scroll down to the new DSTAR configuration section. The RPT1 and RPT2 call signs are automatically configured. Choose a default reflector and select if you want the zoom spot to automatically connect to it or not on boot up. Select the gateway language as appropriate and turn off time announcements, they're just annoying. Click apply changes and the zoom spot will reboot. Click on the admin link at the top of the page and you'll see that DSTAR is up, running and receiving DSTAR traffic. You can change the reflector directly from the admin page. Click Request Change to make or drop the connection. Next, we're going to configure Yesu System Fusion. In the configuration page, turn off DSTAR mode and turn on YSF mode. Click Apply Changes and wait for the Zoom Spot to reboot. Back in the configuration page, scroll down to the new Yesu System Fusion configuration section. Choose a YSF room that the Zoom Spot will connect to on startup. The default FSC00290 America link is a good choice and is quite busy most of the time. If you change this setting to something else, click Apply Changes and wait for the Zoom Spot to reboot. Click on the admin link at the top of the page and you'll see that the Zoom Spot is now active on Yesu System Fusion and on America Link. That's all you need to do. Setting up YSF mode is very simple. The last digital mode we're going to set up is DMR. DMR is probably the most difficult to get up and running on a hotspot. It requires a digital ID, and if you're going to be using the Brandmeister system, which is very popular, you'll need a Brandmeister password. These steps are not difficult to do, it's just extra things that have to be taken on before you can be active on your hotspot. If you've already been using DMR on a repeater, then you already have a DMR ID. Let's configure DMR on the hotspot. In the configuration page, let's deselect YSF mode and turn on DMR mode. Click Apply Changes and the Zoom Spot will reboot. If we've not already been active on DMR, we'll need to get our own DMR ID. If you already have a DMR ID, you can skip this step. In a web browser, go to the radioid.net website by following the link in the video description. Scroll down the page, agree to the agreement, and click Register Account. Enter your call sign, email, a password, your country, tell it that you're not a robot, and click Create Account. From there, follow the instructions and wait for your DMR ID to arrive. Next, we have to get our Brandmeister network password set up. If you're not going to use the Brandmeister network, and I don't know why you wouldn't, you can skip this section. In a web browser, go to the Brandmeister network link in the video description. Create your account and make sure you're logged in. Click on your call sign at the top right of the dashboard page and choose Self Care. Here you'll enter information about your DMR radio and set your hotspot security password. Fill in the fields that describe your radio. Then, at the bottom, choose a security password for your hotspot. I recommend using a numerical password. Click Save when you're done and don't forget the password. Going back to the Zoom Spot configuration page, scroll to the General Configuration section and in the CCS7 DMR ID field, enter your DMR ID. Click Apply Changes and the Zoom Spot will reboot. Back in the configuration page again, scroll down to the new DMR configuration section. There's a lot of information here, but we only need to change a few things. For the DMR master, set it to BM3102 United States. 
Do the same for Brandmeister Master, the M3102 United States. Now enter the Brandmeister Hotspot Security Password that we created earlier. That's all we need to change. Click Apply Changes and the Zoom Spot will reboot. After the reboot, if we scroll down the configuration page again, you'll see that the DMR configuration screen contains much less information. If we scroll back to the top of the page and click the admin link, you'll see that we're now active on DMR. One cool thing you can do on all the digital modes is click on a station's call sign in the dashboard. When you do that, you're automatically taken to the web page they set up in their configuration tab. If you remember, I set mine to automatically go to my QRZ page. Now that everything has been set up, one last thing I would recommend is running the update script. Click the update link at the top of the page and the zoom spot will update the firmware and software on the system. Sometimes you may see this banner at the top of the page which says an update is available. Click the link in the banner and it'll do the update for you. One common question we're asked is, can you run DSTAR, YSF and DMR modes at the same time? The simple answer is yes you can. The caveat is that only one digital mode is active at a time. If the zoom spot is receiving traffic on one mode, say D-Star, it will not be able to receive or transmit on any of the other modes. When that traffic ends, however, and the net hang time and RF hang time expires, then you can pick up another radio and transmit on another mode, say YSF. If you're on a very busy D-Star reflector or DMR talk group or YSF room, then you will not be able to switch away from that mode until the traffic quietens down. The PiStar software rotates through each of the configured modes, waiting to see if there's traffic coming in from the internet or if you're transmitting digital RF from your radio. If you set your hang time values too low, you may find that right after you unkey your radio or right after the remote station unkeys, the PiStar software is moved away from the mode you were using and is now on a different mode. The hang time values of 20 work well in most cases, but you can always change them. There are a couple of things you need to be aware of when running a hotspot based on a Raspberry Pi, such as the zoom spot. Always properly shut down your zoom spot. That means log on via the web browser, go to the power link and choose shutdown. Wait at least 30 seconds before turning off the power. If you don't properly shut down your zoom spot, then you can damage the SD card. It's happened to me probably twice or more. Some more advanced features of the PiStar software allow you to reboot and shut down the zoom spot via remote commands sent by your radio. It's pretty easy to set up, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. Once everything is up and running properly, I highly suggest that you back up your SD card to your computer so that you can quickly and easily restore the backup to a new SD card or the same one if something goes wrong. To do that, simply shut down your zoom spot, remove the SD card, put it in your computer's SD card reader, and use Win32 Disk Imager to read the contents of the SD card and save the file to your computer's hard drive. Make sure you give the file name the .img extension as it won't do this automatically. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or a like, and don't forget the Ham Radio Outlet is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So please consider subscribing and following us. For Ham Radio Outlet, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF. Arigato gozaimashita.